have seen through through the last twenty some years, uh, twenty three years, is uh, it, it increases the susceptibility to to predation. And this is uh, an old sea uh, dom picture, but uh, you can see the difference between the colored dissolved organic matter here at Conk Reef and at Tennessee Reef, and this was from Dana Williams's dissertation, but Dan Otis was, was, uh, uh, produced the I image for Dana. Um, so why did sunlight begin stressing the forams in, in 1991? Um, the, uh, the mass core bleachings actually also follow an, an interesting pattern up to the 1998, and I'll get to that more in a minute, but the, the early, uh, the big uh, uh, major coral bleaching in, in 1983 actually followed the El Chichon uh, volcano, volcanic eruption in Mexico, which knocked about 3% out of the stratospheric ozone layer. The ne Nevada del Ruiz preceded the 1987-88 or 1987 uh, mass bleaching, which uh, Nevada del Ruiz was a smaller volcano, but very sulfate rich, put a lot of sulfur into the, or sulfi uh, sulfur dioxide rich, so sulfur rich and put a lot of uh, uh, sulfur dioxide into the uh, stratosphere. Mount Pinatubo was much bigger, uh, knocked about 4% out of the stratospheric ozone, but also put enough uh, Ash and aerosol into the atmosphere that it uh, prevented uh, that it prevented the temperatures from going up very much in those first years. So, uh, so the trends in coral bleaching here you see the El Chicho and the Nevada del Ruiz. There is a there there was bleaching occurring here in uh, 91, 92. You see bleaching pretty much continuously from uh, uh, from the 90s on. But we have the big event. Uh, bleaching event uh, associated with the big El Nino Southern Oscillation event in 1998. Um, just a comparison briefly of the stress responses real quick here uh, uh, in the forams versus uh, corals. Cyanobacterial infestation, whether black band disease or cyanobacteria in the forams. Uh, Bioerosion, we see uh, evidence uh, the uh, Increased predation, uh, declining survival, and and failure of recruitment, um, and but uh, coral bleaching has always been associated with elevated water temperatures, except when we don't see it associated when we see bleaching. In it. But mass bleaching clearly is associated with elevated water, whereas the forams uh, it it is uh, associated with uh, photic stress. Uh, I mean, you can, if you turn up the heat enough on the forams, they will bleach. But they, but you can bleach them much faster at normal temperatures if you just put blue light on them, just shorten the wavelengths. Um, and the Florida Keys, uh, the coral cover, just since uh, um, since the uh, ninety eight. Uh, 97, 98 die-offs with the with the big El Nino or big El Nino bleaching event, but but over uh, once once the populations stop dying off from the um, uh, actually from the, I should say there's the deep bank reefs and the shallow bank reefs uh, they've pretty much stabilized at about four percent four or five percent uh, since the uh, um, since 1998. Uh, 1999, except for there, of course, there was a big die-off in 2010 associated with a cold event. But interestingly enough, the patch reefs are where you now find the best corals. If you want to go find the highest coral cover in the Florida Keys, for the most part, you dive inshore patch reefs where the water isn't as clear. Interesting, huh? No. And uh, <laughs> here's the weird thing, because the coral cover is so low, we see almost an inverse relationship between the density of, the, of this particular foram and the percent coral cover as recorded by the Coral Reef Monitoring Program. So, 
photooxidative stress. Corals don't tend to bleach. They will bleach in the dark, but it's because you've turned out the lights, uh, ultimately. But uh, if you just turn up the heat in the dark, they'll just die eventually. But it, it, for corals, it takes the combination of high light and high temperature. But the higher the temperature, the less light it takes to, to, to put them into photooxidative stress. Um, and, and the offshore reefs, which have the clearest waters, are really susceptible to the photic stress. And those clearer waters, first of all, have the least colored dissolved organic matter to protect them from the shorter wavelengths of, of, of uh, light. And, uh, and at the same time, when they do bleach, there's very little plankton there for them to recover heterotrophically. So um, the... Uh, uh, Whereas it, kind of the opposite on the, on the patch reefs, they're less vulnerable to the photic stress because their proximity to uh, mangroves or seagrass that's, and the color dissolved organic matter is renewed with every tidal cycle. And some of our prettiest reefs that we've worked with uh, uh, have, have, are now off Pennekamp and, and uh, State Park and other places where you have a very nice intact shoreline and then immediately offshore you some of the best patch reefs left. Um, so uh, the, the uh, patch reefs also have greater temperature, natural temperature variability uh, and, uh, and higher plankton abundances so they, they can recover if they're bleached, but they, often, they don't tend to bleach as badly either, um, even though the temperatures may even be higher uh, on the patch reefs. So uh, why has the optimum habitat for stony corals diverged over the last uh, 30 years? Well, population dynamics is one of the major issues. The forams have a shorter lifespan, so they can recover from a 95% mortality event in two or three years, or five years anyway, and they also recruit from populations that are at uh, more than 30 meters where are more protected from, the, from uh, the shorter wavelengths of light. And they respond differently to the photic stress because they're mobile. They'll, they'll move with the, with the light levels. But we think they're, the reason that they bleached, especially with Pinatubo, was is that you had less incoming photosynthetically or visible radiation but because you had more, uh, about 8% more uh, ultraviolet radiation hitting the sea surface, the combination of what uh, UVB could penetrate, but uh, also that UVB breaks down, accelerates the breakdown rate of the color dissolved organic matter. And, and so the net result is, is the corals are fixed in place and, and they take energy to photoprotect themselves and they seem to be, uh, have declined dramatically uh, in the, uh, this is my, uh, almost my final slide. This is a final science slide. Um, we are in the uh, early stages of stratospheric ozone recovery. It started about uh, 1997, 1998, depending on whose graph you look at, but this particular one. This one shows the effects of Mount Pinatubo uh, in the years immediately after Mount Pinatubo. And then what you have is the long-term trend crossing with the Pinatubo uh, recovery. And, and then the, uh, you've got some bounces. But overall, uh, the stratospheric ozone is recovering. And that shows that international activity, international treaties and, and political action can make a difference in the world and uh, will our forams uh, uh, be the future farmers of the sea? Well, we'll s we won't be around to see it, but uh, uh, the, uh, I want to just mention my crew and how we do use a lot of scuba diving. Uh, actually, I'll start from, from this group. These are my master students. Lucy will be defending next month. Uh, and um, um, the uh, Elizabeth Sonna Fulbright in in uh, uh, 
Bremen. Actually, she's uh, in language class right now. And but I, I also need to mention uh, Maru, who Maria uh, Eugenia. Uh, Ariaga, who's visiting just for three months from the University of Barcelona, and um, she is she's here because in Europe I'm known both for carbonate sedimentology and larger forams because of the connection between sedimentology and larger forams. In the United States, most people, you know, if they know about me at all, they you know that that person who studies those forams or reefs or whatever and and so uh, and so anyway I often have somebody from uh, well from Europe Australia Japan Indonesia uh, are in my lab to either study larger forams or carbonate sediments or some combination of the two and it's really fun so if you see Maru around uh, tell her hello and, oops, sorry, I keep hitting the wrong button on the, so, thank you.